Hello again, Joe the CRM chap here with a new video in my series where we're going to be taking a look at the topics and the subjects that you will need to get to grips with if you are considering sitting the MB400 exam. This is the brand new exam for developers for those who are extending solutions on top of either Dynamics 365 or the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a fairly new thing in the whole um, when it comes to Power Platform development specifically, it's a thing called Power Apps Component Framework Controls. And so traditionally, when you're developing solutions for Dynamics CRM or Dynamics 365, you'd use things such as maybe web resources or in some cases, quite a lot of different JavaScript code when you need to do quite uh, complex form amends. What PCF controls allow you to do is take that a step further and let you replace views, fields, and other controls in the application with a variety of different components so it could be that you take a date control and you completely transform that into a new calendar view that you customize with different colors and things like that you could take let's say a, um, a list of tasks in a subgrid and convert that into a calendar view as well uh, you can do things such as you know show a gallery of different items that have photos display on that they're a really powerful tool that lets you do some quite amazing things not just with model driven app forms but also with canvas apps too now they've also got support for that as well so what I want to do is I want to sort of show you how you can basically develop a PCF control and get that deployed into the application. Uh, in this video specifically, because it's quite, it's quite potentially a long video if we were to cover it all in once, what we're going to do in this video is instead look at the what you need to do to get your environment set up to develop a PCF control for the first time. Uh, because certainly when I was looking at this for the first time, it, it's not too clear in terms of exactly okay, what is the minimum things that I need and what is the best tools that I need to use in order to start developing my PCF controls. Okay, so I've got, um, to kick things off then, so I've got my a machine on here, Windows 10 machine, it's basically just been installed, fresh out of the box, ready to go. Uh, and we need to first of all get the various components that we need installed. And the first one that we need to install is Node.js. So installing this gives us access to obviously Node.js, but also NPM as well. And that's what we use to basically, uh, NPM stands for Node, um, Node, uh, I should know this, uh, Node Package Manager, I think it is. I'm just checking now. Uh, yeah, Node Package Manager. And it basically just gives you the ability of being able to reuse common components that have been built out in JavaScript. Uh, and it's one of the foundation points of PCF development. Um, so you go to the Node.js website um, to basically download it. Uh, you want to go for the uh, LTS release, that's the recommended one. Already got it downloaded, ready to go, and so we'll kick off the install for this now. Now, there's an important thing to mention with the install of this specifically. Uh, this is we need to make sure that we've ticked a specific option. So I'm just going through now. I'm just going to accept all the default options up to here. This is all good down here. Click on next. Now this is the option on here. Now we need to make sure that we tick this this box here because otherwise we'll be missing some required components uh, that we're going to need later on, and things may start may start to error unless we've got it installed. So we're going to tick that box on there. It's going to extend the installation procedure out um, considerably but you know it does pay off in the end as I've just said um, so click install accept the UAC prompt on there the actual node install doesn't take that long to complete thankfully it's the next bit where um, it's a little bit longer so I'll probably just pause the video and skip ahead when we get to that point okay so that's been installed successfully so I'm going to click finish at this point and then we should get a command prompt window on here where it's going to pull in, it's going to pull in various tools, it's going to pull in Python, it's going to pull in um, some Visual Studio build tools, those, those are the critical things that we need. And also a really good tool, Chocolatey. Uh, so if you're doing anything with PowerShell and you're wanting to install um, you know, some additional packages to sort of help you along, Chocolatey is a really good module for you to look at for that. So we're just going to click press any key, we need to just do that twice. And then things get kicked off on here, so we should get a PowerShell script window show up after we have to accept the UAC prompt of course. And this is going to go off and download and install all the various components that we're going to need. So at this point, I'm just going to pause the video. This is you know, quite boring. Uh, you don't want to sit here just watching this and listening to me, I'm sure. So we'll just pause this and then we'll jump straight back once the install has finished. Okay, we're back now after about 20 minutes and we can see everything's been downloaded. Um, all okay, so we can just close out the setup now just by typing enter and hitting enter. <laughs> A bit strange, but never mind. Uh, so we've got the node fully installed now, so we can move on to our next component, which will be our 
.NET Framework Developer Pack 4.6.2 uh, and it's the developer pack that you want, not the runtime. So we've got that downloaded down here, so we'll give that a run through now. This should take a little bit, this should be a fair bit quicker, I hope. As usual, just say yes to any and all user account prompts. And this one. Hmm. Yeah, seem to be having problems with my Hyper-V session. Oh. oh, there we go. Right, let's go full screen again. Let's just glitch temporarily. Um, oh. So I might move which one? Oh, this. Let's try reconnecting. Full screen, let's try again. Okay, I'm just going to pause the video set while we sort this. Okay, not entirely sure what happened there, but as you can see, the .NET Framework Developer Pack has been installed relatively quickly, which is all good. So that's another one off the list. The next thing that we need to do is to download the .NET Core uh, 3.1. Um, so at the time of recording this, we're at 3.1.3, .3, which is the latest one. So just pick either the latest one or the one that's on uh, long time, or long LTS, which is long term support, I think. Um, so yeah, so we've got the install already downloaded. So let's give that a, a quick run through now. Again, should be fairly quick compared to the first one. Okay, that's all installed. Uh, and now we need to install uh, Visual Studio Code. So when it comes to PCF, developing PCF controls, you've got two options. You can go down the traditional Visual Studio route. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're comfortable using that, then by all means use that. In, instead, you can opt, opt to use Visual Studio Code. Now, Visual Studio Code is a much more lightweight development tool um, and does require a bit more um, work to sort of get up and ready for what you need. But certainly for the development experience um, compared to traditional Visual Studio is a lot better. I think the only thing I'd just say is that you do need to invest some time up front just to get your head around how Visual Studio code behaves when you compare it to Visual Studio. So you go to the Visual Studio website on here. Um, again, we'll put all these links. I'll put all these links in the uh, in the description of the video, so you can obviously refer back to them. Um, we can download it on any platform, which is really good. But Windows is the one that we care about at the moment. So we've got the install ready to go. So let's give that a whirl. Set the license agreement. Just click next through this. Uh, these settings don't matter too much, but I'm just going to tick that just to make things easier for me later on. Excuse me. Okay, and now we can install Visual Studio Code. Okay, we don't want to launch it just now, so we'll just click finish on there. And then the final thing we want to install is the Power App CLI, which gives us access to a few different commands, which are going to be which are going to be useful for us. Um, so in order to um, download that, there's a separate link that you go to on here, just a little short link up there. So you go to that, and it will let you download it. I've already got it all set up here, ready to go. So I'm just going to click the button on here, set the license terms, and it's going to go off and it's going to install that in the background for us. Okay, so with that all installed and ready to go, um, the final thing is just to basically just verify that we've got the latest version of the pack control. We should do because it's just with that command prompt window there. 
um, it should have gone off and basically got the latest version. So now we're going to switch down to the Visual Studio Developer command prompt, um, which will basically be what we use to get things initialized for our environment. Um, so let that load up on there, and then we just want to run the command pack install latest. As you can see from there, we've got the latest version, no need to update it, so we're all good and ready to go. So before we finish off this video for, for now, um, we're just going to get our environment, our project set up, ready to go, so that we're in, when we jump into the next video, we can get started and build out the component from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to change directory first of all. Uh, oops, uh, wrong window selected. So I'm just going to do uh, change directory CD to my C drive. Um, I'm going to create a new directory in there using the mkdir command. Uh, we shall call this uh, mb400 uh, sample. Uh, we'll go again, we're going to change uh, into that directory over there. Uh, oops, no. Uh, 400 sample. Okay, so we're in our folder over there. And now we need to run a very specific command to basically initialize this folder ready for our project. Um, so we're going to start off by doing pack pcf int in init rather. Uh, we need to give the project a namespace value. Um, so that's just a um, what we're going to use to develop on this. So I'm just going to use my initials jjg for that. Then the actual name of the project as well. So we're going to call this our mb400 sample. Uh, and then the final one that you need to supply is the template. So this basically, when you're developing a PCF control, you need to decide straight away whether it's going to be targeting a specific field on a form or a subgrid or a view instead. Um, so in this case, we're just going to create one that's going to target a field instead. So we're going to hit return on that. And it's going to go off now and get our um, directory ready to go. Uh, the final thing we just need to do at this stage is that we need to basically go off to node using npm, get all of the dependencies, get them all installed, ready to go so that we can start our development. So the final command we just need to run is npm install. It's going to go off and fetch all that. Potentially quite a bit that is going to download here. Um, so I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to pause the video here and then we'll come back as soon as it's finished. Okay, so NPM has run, it's downloaded all of the packages that we need for that. Um, so now we're ready to sort of uh, go from there. So all we need to do at this point is that we want to get this project opened up into a Visual Studio code. Uh, if I run the following command here, it should open up Visual Studio, this whole project in our Visual Studio code window. And then we'll be good and ready to go. Yeah, so we can see down here, we've got the open welcome screen down here. Then we've got our MB400 sample with all sorts of little goodies in here. So in the next video, what we'll do, we're going to go, we're going to follow on from where exactly where we are here. We're going to get our component built up. I hope this video has been useful. You can see the precise steps that you need to follow in order to get your environment set up to basically develop these components for the very first time. So be sure to, st be sure to stick around. Uh, check out the other videos in the series so far if you are thinking of going for the MB400 exam. Leave a comment below and uh, please subscribe. There will be more videos in the series coming out soon. Uh, but thanks for watching and take care.